Um, yeah, welcome everybody. Um, I am Mario Torre, and is Marcus here. We are here today to um, introduce a little bit about uh, Mission Control of Fry Recorder and explain uh, what what it is, uh, how it can be useful, and how it can be useful, especially in in, in a production system. Um, uh, that's the agenda for today. Um, as I say, a short introduction, and then we will see one specific use case, but that's, that should be taken as, as an example of what you can do with, uh, with the framework, obviously. Um, the example is, is about open tracing, and we will see how to, um, to do analysis of a distributed application with load balancing and, and everything. Um, the first code drop, so, um, I would say a mission control fire record that can be seen as, as some kind of a framework or a platform is, is actually two big pieces. One is, um, is living in the, uh, in the JDK, and that's a uh, fly recorder. And the other part is, is a standalone application with a very comprehensive set of APIs that is uh, mission control. Um, Java fly recorder was open sourced uh, last year with OpenJDK 11. Um, while mission control it was yeah, for uh, practically uh, soon after, uh, sometime in May, I believe, um, and they both residing as, as, as a official projects in, uh, under the OpenJDK uh, umbrella. Um, since then, it's been less than a year, basically, there's already a, a, a very awesome number of contributions. So this has been um, a very, very good project from the beginning, and I want to take this opportunity to thank Marcus because he's running, it is really, really open. Uh, on, on the project. Um, and of course, why Oregon and Red Hat are the main contributor at this point? There's been a lot of discussion and contribution from the, the rest of the community. So it's a very healthy open source project. Um, so, JDK Fly Recorder. Um, the good analogy for that is actually from the name itself. Uh, when you think about uh, the fly recorder, um, data recorder in an airplane, is something that starts um, gathering information of events that happen during the flight. Um, sometimes, also in case of uh, catastrophic events, keeps recording, and then it, there is a way to store this, the, all, all, all those events, and then at some point, uh, with a forensic tool afterward, analyze them. And that, this is what happens with, between my mission control and fire record. The mission control is this forensic tool, while fire record is the actual data in itself. Um, again, open sourcing in JDK 11 um, is very actively developed, so the, the OSPOT team is still uh, adding features uh, at every release. Um, an example of uh, how you can use that, so in addition to the use on metrics, they are uh, there for, for the actual JVM. There is also a very neat, nice and neat API that you can use to extend your own application. So it's possible to instrument your application adding events, and then those events will basically use everything that is the same um, infrastructure that, that the core fly recorder events use, and then they can then be analyzed by mission control. Um, we see here, so it's very easy to add events. Um, this is the most trivial example. Uh, it's basically uh, creating a class that needs to extend event, and then you can start adding some information about what it is that you are uh, logging. In this case, the, the trivial example is, uh, is just adding labels, but you have all sorts of, of different metadata uh, that can be useful uh, to analyze and, and structure the event, things like um, the, the frequency, for instance, or giving meaning to specific fields. Um, and yeah, that, that is basically everything you do to define those. Then whenever it is, is necessary, you decide whatever the event should be committed. At that point, uh, some magic happens, and then it ends up in the, in the flight record uh, file. Um, and as you see, this is extremely easy. Um, the next step, the next part of the picture is, is uh, mission control. Mission control um, is an application. So it's mostly basic, it's based on Eclipse. So you run uh, as a standalone de desktop application. However, it also has um, an API that you can use to build your own application using the, the power of, of, of this framework. It's an API, we will see that in the next slide, uh, that is very similar, uh, I would say, to the streams. So you don't actually go and, and do some uh, 
one by one event processing on, on, on the data. Instead, you ask mission control to give you some statistical analysis for you. And this is very powerful. That's an example, for instance. Um, this is basically a method that is using the API without the full application, but only the API, to create uh, an HTML report out of the, uh, of the rules. Um, so it's basically load the events. This is the event file that's been created uh, by, uh, by the JVM when, when dumping the, the flare record the file. Another example here, this is a little bit more complex, and by complexity, I really mean just five lines or code more, and this explains you how, how powerful is the whole API. So basically, you're still, uh, yeah, you're still collecting the events, you're still analyzing them, and there at some point, you, you get a count and average, and those are, as you see, those are basically, you, you never deal with the single events. You basically ask for, to the framework to, to give you an average and a standard deviation, and then you can print the result. In so few lines of code, it's possible to get a lot of information out of it. Some of this information, um, well, another, yeah, sorry, another example that we, 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 we were creating uh, some example for this uh, demonstration, and we went for a more complex one that the Marcos is going to show you. But as an example you can download, this is very nice because this is basically two Java applications running in two separate Docker containers. They are talking to each other. One is controlling flight recorder, and the other is actually the, the, the VM that is being targeted to, to, to be analyzed. And then this is um, uh, dumping events, uh, the, the file record the data, then the first application that analyzes using the, the mission control API. It gives you another uh, use case. Open tracing. On this one, I pass. Right. Yes. OK. Yes. So I actually have a fever, so I might be delirious. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyways, uh, I'm going to press it on. So, um, open tracing, yeah. So, I'm, um, I have an example here uh, consisting of a few uh, microservices. Um, it's a robot uh, ordering uh, and building uh, application. So, um, this, these are the three microservices. We have an order service uh, that just takes the orders. And when we get an order, we'll verify that the customer is an actual customer in the system. And then we're going to talk to a factory for, for building the robots. And, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We also have a load generator that we can use to, to, to get uh, do this full system testing. So <clears throat> this is uh, how it might look. We're getting a request. Um, we're talking to the, say, order system. And the order system, in turn, uh, is going to verify that the customer exists by talking to the customer um, service. And then we're going to maybe talk to a few factories to start building these robots. But what if something goes wrong? This is where open, you know, open tracing or distributed tracing systems come in. So uh, Google um, released a paper called Dapper uh, that many of you probably already know about, um, about their infrastructure, their distributed infra, uh, tracing infrastructure in 2010. And that has inspired a host of other uh, systems like Zipkin and Jaeger. You're, how many here knows about Zipkin? Like almost everybody. So, you know, um, it, 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 it's a very commonly used tool. Uh, of course, this is nothing new. Distributed tracing is something that people have been doing for quite some time. All the APM vendors are doing this uh, in one way or another. So, uh, and they are all doing pretty much the same thing if we talk about Java land. Everybody is using bytecode instrumentation uh, to get data from various different systems. So, uh, the differentiation here is really about what to instrument, what data to get. And then also the other part of the differentiation is really how they present the data to the user. So the value add here is knowing what to actually do with the data once you have it. <clears throat> so previously, if you wanted to add some contextual information, uh, so you have your own application and you would really like to put some pieces of information into this distributed tracing, well, you would need to work with a vendor uh, specific proprietary API. Or if you, as a library vendor, wanted to add some special information, there again, you, you pretty much had to, to work with one of the uh, uh, tracer implementations. So uh, then came Open Tracing, which is a uh, vendor independent API so that uh, you can support multiple tracers with one API. And you can add uh, contextual information without worrying about some vendor lock in. And, and um, yeah. 
there is a spec um, on GitHub if you're interested in, in, in looking at the spec. So I'm quickly just going to go through some uh, basic uh, parts of, of the API because you will need to know this when, when, when I do the demo. So the core API, uh, well, this is not actually part of the API, uh, but the, the core concept is a distributed trace. So this is something that will span multiple um, processes or can span multiple processes. Um, and it, it's really a directed uh, acyclic graph of spans. So um, we'll get to spans. Uh, and a span itself has an operation name and some, some data. So there are key value um, stores, sort of. It has a start time and an end time. That's really the key, key piece of information. You, you want to know how long these spans took um, because that's probably one of the key pieces of information you're going to use to find out that something is going bad. Okay, <clears throat> and then there's a span context and that is propagated across, these uh, across the process boundaries. Uh, yep, yeah. so I'm just gonna skip ahead. So in our robot shop, this is what this uh, graph could look like. So we have the load generator, which does a full system test. It's going to create a customer, a random customer. Then we're going to post an order, which might be you know, multiple robots that we want to create. We're going to start by validating the customer, then create whatever many robots we want to create, pick up the robot and you know, fulfill the order, and at the very end, delete our customer. So I'm going to do a quick demo of what this might look like. So I'm going to start bunch of services. You're going to see an exception because there is, I'm running JDK 11 for the scanners. Well, you don't see anything. Is this going to help? Do I need to do something else? Or do I need to exit here? Maybe? Hello. Okay, I'll mirror. Uh, where do I do that? Okay. So, display. Here we go. Okay, so you're seeing something at least. Okay, so I've started a bunch of services, and now I'm going to start a little um, load generator. Uh, single increment load generator. So it's now creating this um, customer, and it's going to ful fulfill an order. And after a little while, we're going to be done there, and I'm just gonna start a uh, start the Jager UI so that we can look at our traces here and here we go. So this is basically the the full cycle of us um, creating a customer. You can see that we first check what whatever types the factory can build and then we're checking what paints are available and then we create a random user and at some point here we're going to start building robots in a factory. What we can see when we start building these robots is that it, creating a chassis actually takes, there's a lot of variance in how long it takes to create a chassis. So here we're creating an Eve type of robot, then we're painting it red. Here we're creating some other type of robot. And you can see that the variance in how long it takes to actually create those robots, I mean it would be an amazing factory that can create robots in seconds, but still, you know, it, it's a lot of variance. And why is that? And this is typically where these distributed tracers break down. You don't get the information that you need to actually be able to do something about this. So you know that there is a problem probably in the factory, but you, you don't know, know what to do about it. So what if we... Okay, so I'm going to just do it like this. Uh, so, exit. Here. 
I don't care. I've got a fever. So, here we go. Um, so the idea then is what happens if you start marrying flight recorder with the distributed tracer? Um, so what if you could get the low level information that you require to be able to, to, to solve these kind of problems and you can marry that with the tracer? So basically what you would need is some way to take the contextual information that you have from the tracer and push that into the flight recorder so you can start correlating them, right? You would be able to need to get record the trace ID, um, span ID, all these kind of uh, identities that allow you to, to, to properly go find what was actually going down. Um, so one way to do that is to create an open tracing tracer and start emitting flight recorder events uh, using that tracer. And there is a concept that I didn't talk about, which is called scope. And that is a thread local activation of a span. So uh, that rhymes very well with the thread local recording of events in, 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 in flight recorder, right? So what if we could do that? What if we can, could, could start recording this contextual information? Then we could probably um, do something good. So I built a prototype. I've, I've um, uh, donated it to Open Tracing. Um, there are still some things in Open Tracing that should be fixed to minimize the object allocations, but it's, it works. Um, and, and it's built as an MR jar, so it will work on Oracle JDK 7 and Open JDK 11 plus. Uh, and there is, uh, you know, there is a link towards the end. I think the link might be to my uh, GitHub repo pre uh, donating it. So, anyways, so I'm going to do a quick demo of what, what might, ha what might happen if we <laughs> get away. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and, you know, push, push, push some more data into into the tracer. And the thing is, I am actually running with Flight Recorder already. So let's take a look at Jager UI. Now we should have another trace, right? So what do we want to do now? We want to check out what the factory was actually doing. So let's go back to my Eclipse and let's look at Flight Recorder. So all these guys actually have a flight recording running, and it's the factory that I'm interested in. Oops. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump that whole recording. <coughs> so I've dumped the recording, and I've actually done a little special UI here for, for traces. So we can see that there is a bunch of traces here, low resolution. And we can see that we have one trace that took 1.3 seconds. So maybe look at what was actually going on there. And let's go to the Java application. Well, Java threads, actually. And um, I want to see all of them. And I only want to see stuff that was happening in the same thread during the same time. So here we can see what was actually going on here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So we see our thread local activations of the spans. So we can see that there are scope events associated to that span ID. And you know you would get that ID from Jaeger if you really wanted to home in on a specific one. And you can see that what's happening here is that we're actually blocked on entering a Java monitor here. So we have a synchronization problem here. And well, we can either go look at the actual lock instances here um, very specifically. And we'll see that it's this monitor, and this is the stack trace. So it's this logger that is being used. And this logger is the thing that we're all synchronizing on all these threads, and that's why we have this skew in, 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 or variance in the time it takes to invoke this problem. So we now have stack traces. We have low-level events like Java Monitor Enter. Um, we, it's not just Java Monitor Enter. We have parks. We have all these wonder. This very rich. If you haven't looked at Flight Recorder, you'll see that there is a very rich um, set of events. Um, so there is a method profiler, it's an allocation profiling. In this case, uh, it's a thread halts. So what is actually going on when we aren't executing? So what halted the thread? And in this case, it was Java Monitor Enter. And that's why we're not um, executing. Uh, so how are we time-wise? <coughs> I think 
we have a few minutes for questions as well. Yes. Okay, so I'll just go back to... <laughs> Ten, five minutes more. Okay. Um, so that we can have some questions, I'm going to sum this up. Um, JDK Fight Recorder has been open sourced since JDK 11, so it's something that you can already use. Um, there are even ARM, uh, you know, builds with Flight Recorder working on OpenJDK. So those of you who are doing embedded systems might find that very useful to record sensor data. And I have an example uh, with using um, laser rangefinders and recording the laser rangefinder information and using the mission control to render what we're actually seeing. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's mission control has been open source. I'm sorry it hasn't been released yet. It's process stuff. Um, so it should be released within, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks. We'll see. Um, um, open tracing is open source, has always been. It's, and that's the vendor neutral initiative for doing distributed tracing. And since I'm Oracle, uh, <laughs> I, and since I actually said something about the future, uh, this <laughs> slide Especially says, regarding the release. <laughs> this uh, especially <laughs> regarding the release. That might change uh, at the sole discretion of Oracle. Um, so here are some resources. So the project for mission control, that's up there. My blog here. Um, so uh, I'm talking about cool things you could do with Flight Recorder, usually. Um, and then my GitHub, if you want to look at some of the examples, um, or you know the tracer, or whatever. There are also some serviceability examples for the Java serviceability APIs and uh, yeah, stuff. Okay, so I'm going to sit down, I think. Yeah, do you have some <laughs> questions for us? <laughs> yeah. Questions? I think I have to go around there and then come to So I've been um, doing similar kind of event, sort of like inserting event into my application. And at the moment, I'm actually using something called Micrometer from Spring. So how is that metrics um, sort of event differs from open tracing? Or can they actually be basically, I, I just instrument it once, and then basically I'll get all the events? So what you, what, what, what you mean is how this is different from open tracing? Oh, so, okay. So open tracing is just an API for, 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 for a vendor neutral API to, to push things into uh, the tracers, right? So you can use it with Zipkin, you can use it with Jaeger, you can use it with a, a lot of different tracers. Um, so the thing you get with open tracing is the ability to, to uh, just use one API, and then the end user can choose which tracer he wants to use. I'm not sure about Micrometer or how it's implemented. If you're talking about Flight Recorder and stuffing things into Flight Recorder, um, well, Flight Recorder is a very highly efficient uh, recording engine built into the JVM. So the overhead when you're using Flight Recorder, and there is a ton of cool things we're doing. Like some platforms we're using invariant TSC for, for, for time stamping, getting really fast time stamping. It's a binary format. We're using uh, integer compression to, to make sure that we're not using more, more memory than we want to, or well, as little as possible. <laughs> and there's a whole host of cool things we're doing inside of the JVM to just make sure that it's really, really fast. And if you turn off an event um, and it's on the hot path, yeah, it's, it's you can be pretty sure that it's going to be, be optimized away. You're not going to see in the, if you disassemble the assembly for the method, you're basically not going to see, to see a trace of anything that has to do with, with events. I think, I think also one point important is, that is the knowledge of, oops, um, of the knowledge of everything uh, of those events have um, because it's all tied to, to the runtime of the JVM. So when you are adding some events that are custom events for your application, uh, you still have um, some way of contextualize that with the rest of the environment. And that's where the, the example Marcus did before is, is important and critical. It's not that open tracing cannot tell you because of some specific way, reason, but it's only because it doesn't have the knowledge of the runtime it's running on where the virtual machine does have this knowledge. So it's, it's easy for you to correlate the various events in the same application. And this is the power of, of Flyer Gordon, I think. 
I think another good point, uh, oh, this is a long answer to your question. I, now we're going down a rabbit hole. But uh, uh, another good, good, good point is that it's built into the JVM, right? So um, there is certain information that we can get from the JVM. So heap composition, for example, when we garbage collect, we can start um, gathering data as part of, you know, the, the, say, the mark phase of the garbage collector. So you don't need to explicitly go, say, to, you know, now I want to, you know, go through the heap to see what's there. We can piggyback on already existing systems to, to get the data. So some data we pretty much get for free just as part of running the, the, yeah. the program. Well, yes, you can. <laughs> that is a good question. I uh, don't think you want to do that, <laughs> well, but uh, you <laughs> can. Because the problem with Prometheus is that Prometheus is very much about harvesting the data. You will end up getting one, end, one event at a time. So you can absolutely do that with, with, with Prometheus and, and have some, some way of uh, telling. So I don't know if you so write a simple application that makes uh, the, the reads the file record events and then one by one uh, make them available to Prometheus. But I think this this will kind of invalidate the point that that you have access to to, to all these statistical methods in the first place and it's all over at the So to 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 take an example, just a random example. Um, if you take a flight recording file, which is a binary recording, which has constant pools for the stack traces, I mean, stack traces are literally sets of integers com pointing into the constant pool. If you take that thing and you transform it to JSON, that thing is going to blow up by yeah. several orders of magnitude. It's like, <laughs> and then if you take all that data and you try to push it into an event system, that event system is going to be unhappy. So it's better to get the data when you need it. So for example, uh, the example that I did uh, with the tracer. So when you know that there is something suspicious going on, you can leave the flight recorder running because you're not going to see more than say a percent of overhead. You can actually have it running all the time. So when you see something that actually is interesting to you from the contextual data that you get from the tracer, that's when you can dump it and, and, and look at the data, you know, the detailed data. And as Mario was talking about, you have in mission control a bunch of, uh, well, there, 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 is the, there is the core API for mission control, which is basically a set of bundles that you can use to do automated analysis of flight recordings. Um, so then you can push that through that pipeline if you want to. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So this is what I was, uh, was, wanted to ask. So the best, the best approach in this case would be to have uh, some kind of uh, in-between application that does the processing using the API and then output the results to Prometheus if you want to, or in some already optimized form. Yeah. Oh. Yes, it's over. It's Indeed. over. It's over. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.